Hello, welcome to General Chemistry 1. My name is Daniel, and today we're going to be looking at significant figures and measurements and errors in measurements, and as well as how to calculate all those things. So this is going to be kind of a precursor to us getting into actual chemistry, because we're going to just lay the foundations right now of how to look at our data and look how accurate it is and just kind of calculate things in order to help us make sure that the data we're looking at is a representation of what we're actually measuring. All right. So what exactly is a significant figure? Let's take a look. So significant figures, let's say we have three measurements like this. We have 0 0.2314, 2875, 0 0.24, and 0 0.26. And let's say we want to take the average of those things. Does it make sense to report that average like this here? So if we take the average here in this calculation, we get an average of 0 0.2438095. But does it make a lot of sense to report it like that? Especially because we have numbers with two digits over here. So why are we reporting an average with eight digits? So this is where significant figures come in. So what we're going to do is with significant figures is we're going to look at the significant figures of each number and that's going to help us determine how many significant figures should be in our answer. All right, so let's take a look another look at that data. So we can look at the we can calculate significant figures based on the number of non-zero integer digits in the number. So for example, our first big number has eight significant figures. The other two have only two significant figures. So what's going to happen is that our average answer is going to have to have these two significant figures as well. That's going to be a more accurate representation of our data. All right, so let's take a look at how that looks. So let's recalculate incorporating significant figures. And we get an average of 0.24. Now, the key thing to a key thing to note here is that this number, this 0.24, isn't numerically the exact average, meaning that if I just plugged all these numbers straight into a calculator, that it wouldn't give it wouldn't give this answer. This is a rounded answer here. But this is kind this is a more accurate way to represent our average because of the limitations of the accuracy of our data. You know, two two of our data points here only have two decimal places, two significant figures. Well this one has eight over here. So we're limited we're limited by the ones with less significant figures in them. And that's why we have to report with less significant figures in our answer. So that makes some sense. OK? So let's look at assigning significant figures in a more um, scientific way. Let's look at the process of doing that. So there's two scenarios we can have when we're looking at significant figures. The first one is when there's a decimal point present. So when there's a decimal point present, we're going to start on the left of the number and we're going to look at the non-zero integers. Or sorry, the z we're going to look at the zero integers first. We're going to eliminate the zero integers on the l starting on the left side until we reach our first non-zero integer. And then we're going to count significant figures. So if we take a look at this number here in this example, 0 0.003505. So if we start on the left side, we see three zeros. So we're going to eliminate them from our significant figure count. And then we have our non-zero integers. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3. That 0 in the middle is counting because it's in between two non-zero integers. We're only getting rid of n zero integers in the beginning. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. This has four significant figures. Okay, Each one of the numbers is just one significant figure. Now the other scenario we can have is if the decimal point is absent. So let's say we have a decimal point absent, like in this number, 742300. What we're going to do is similar to if there's a decimal point, except now we're going to start on the right side and go the same way, do the same process. So on the right side here, we have two zeros. We're going to eliminate them. And then we have one, two, three, and four significant figures in this one, too. So these two numbers both have four significant figures. The only difference is that one has a decimal place in it, one does not. And that changes how we calculate the signif significant figures for each of those numbers. So we can look at some quick examples of that. Um, just give, give yourself a second to try these out on your own. Just pause the video and do it. 
okay? So let's see, A, 9.00. So this has a decimal point present, so we're going to start on the left side, but we see that there's no zeros on the left side. So we're just going to count like normal on this one. One, two, three. This has three significant figures. For B, we have the same thing going on. No zeros on the left side. So one, two, three, four, and five. Five significant figures in that one. Now, in C, we don't have a decimal place. So we have to start on the right side. So we see that there's a zero on the right side. Then we reach our first non-zero integer. So that's going to be one, two, three, four significant figures in that one. 90.210 has the decimal point present. We see no zeros on the left side. So we're just going to count like normal again. Five significant figures in that one. Now for E, we see scientific notation. In scientific notation, we're going to treat that as though it's a normal number with a decimal point. So for the sake of significant figures, we're just going to ignore this part. So then this is just 9.02. So then 1, 2, and 3. Three significant figures. The last one, F, is just 900,000, no decimal point. So we're going to start on the right side, get rid of our zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This number has only one significant figure. And that's kind of tricky because you think, oh, this is a big number. It should have lots of significant figures. But for all we know, that 900,000 was rounded from any combination of numbers between, let's say, 85001 to 94999. Like, it could have been rounded based on significant figures from any of these points here. Okay? So now we can move on into looking at the arithmetic and how it's involved in significant figures. So once again, two cases. The first one is addition and subtraction. So when we're doing addition and subtraction, we're going to do it based not on significant figures, but based on decimal places. So for example, let's take a look at these two examples. So on the left side, we have 1.00797. How many decimal places does that have? That has one, two, three, four, five numbers after the decimal place. That's the same number underneath it. And then 15.9994 has only four decimal places. So what we have to do is we have to choose an answer. We have to calculate our answer based on the least number of decimal places. So our answer here is only going to have four decimal places as well. Same thing on the right side when we're doing subtraction. The top number has five decimal places. The bottom number has only three decimal places. So our answer has to also have three decimal places. Okay? So addition and subtraction are based on decimal places. It's a very different from significant figures. These numbers all have different numbers of, of significant figures in decimal places, but we're going to be calculating our answer based on the least number of decimal places we see in our data sets. Okay, and the other scenario is multiplication and division. Now in this one, we're doing it based on significant figures. So for example, let's look on the left side with this multiplication. We have 3.10 that has one, two, three significant figures. 4.102 has four significant figures. 8.3124 has five significant figures. So then our answer has to have the lowest number of significant figures. So that's going to be three. And we see that 106 has three significant figures. You'll note that it's not decimal places in, the, it's not decimal places in this um, scenario because, as you can see, these numbers have, what, two decimal places, three decimal places, four decimal places. Our answer has zero decimal places. So in multiplication and division, it's all just based on significant figures. We can do the same thing for our division on the right side. So let's see, 7.9321 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 significant figures. 0.98, get rid of that first zero. This has two significant figures. And we see our answer also has, oops, two significant figures.